Welcome to Pulse episode 65, StarCraft News. This week we take a look at a ton of patch 1.3 news and extras. As usual, some GSL, TSL, MLG and NASL updates, a ton of cool art updates, a bunch of new StarCraft themed songs, quite a few interesting interviews and much more. Let's get started. StarCraft 2 Wings of Liberty patch 1.3 has finally hit. Yes, we've been waiting for this one for what seems like forever. What's new, you ask? This patch features adjustments to race balance, which I will cover in just a second, notable join custom game improvements, a few amazing new observer and replay watching features, some minor changes to the ladder maps and map pools, support for the upcoming Grandmaster League, several bug fixes, and even some secret, undocumented changes. Let's start it off with the balance changes. In the general changes, as I mentioned in a previous episode, the ability to hide your units in a close proximity clump of sorts has been removed. Protoss all around the world have been complaining endlessly about the removal of the Kadaran amulet, but at least they got a little buff to Zealots. Charging Zealots will now hit fleeing targets at least once. Lastly, for the Protoss, it seems like Blizzard also tried fixing that Archon Toilet trick by making units untargetable and immune for 1.5 seconds after leaving a Vortex. As far as I can tell, it didn't really change anything. For Terran, there was a build time increase on bunkers from 35 to 40 seconds, and Stimpak now takes 170 seconds to research instead of 140. Battlecruisers were sped up and Ghost's EMPs were modified a little too. Now for the Zerg changes. The only Zerg changes in this patch were made to the Infestor's Fungal Growth ability. It has effectively been buffed quite a bit. The stun now lasts half the time and still does the same amount of damage, but it does do 30% extra to armored now. Yes, that'll most likely change things up a little. Other changes include a bunch of editor improvements and, as I mentioned, bug fixes. Be sure to check the full patch notes below to learn all about these latest changes. Now let's take a look at a few patch 1.3 extras and some of the other changes and improvements I didn't mention. If you didn't realize, Blizzard has added in a brand new season based reward system known as Milestones, which will come into play at the end of Season 1. Each league will have four notable milestones. Bronze, Silver, Gold, Platinum, Diamond and Masters League will have milestones for the top 100, top 50, top 25 and top 8 players in each league division. These milestones will each have their own unique icon, as you can see on your screens right now, representing the league in which the milestone was earned and the actual milestone achievement. With patch 1.3 already released, all players are now locked into their current league and division. We have been given a week to play out our remaining bonus pool, while promotions and demotions into and out of divisions will be disabled. You may still move up or down within your own division's ladder, though. Once the one week bonus pool period is over, Season 1 will officially end and all ladder rankings will be finalized. Milestones will be awarded to the top players in each division shortly after, and Blizzard will display the results in-game in the Leagues and Ladders section. This same process is expected to take place at the end of each ladder season, and I gotta say it will definitely spice things up a little. There were also a couple of ladder map pool changes in 1.3, most notably with the addition of Taldarim Altar and the return of Shakuras Plateau. There were also a few changes made to these maps as well as Backwater Gulch and the Shattered Temple. The 2v2 map pool has also seen a few changes, but I won't be covering that in detail right here. You can, however, read it all in the links below. Next up, let's take a look at the new and improved Join Custom Map Interface. Firstly, to clean up the interface, Blizzard has moved the Details panel into tooltips for describing each custom game. Just mouse over the games you want to know more about and you'll find the details you need. In addition, you can now bookmark your favorite custom games. This will allow you to find your favorite games easily, and the Details tooltip will display the number of times the game has been bookmarked. Useful information? I think so. Games are now organized into several pages to make finding your desired game type more intuitive and user friendly. You can now organize the maps by most popular, featured, category, up and coming, bookmarks, and lastly, you can now even search for the map you're looking for. You can also have a go at recommending custom games to others by trying the fun or not feature. Players who choose this option will automatically be matched together for specific custom games which meet some minimum requirements set. 
Once finished, you'll be asked whether you enjoyed the game or not, and whether you'd recommend it to someone else. Your recommendations using the Final Knot system will directly influence the up and coming section. This is a great way to play and help promote fun custom maps that have otherwise flown under the radar. I think with all these changes and all the others I can't really even start to mention here, things are definitely looking up for the StarCraft 2 custom map community. Either log on to the Battle.net now and try all this fun and exciting stuff out for yourself, or just check the links below for all the information you could ever want. Last up in the extras section, it seems like Blizzard are working on a text message to warn players about Nidus Worms. Much like our own galaxy, the StarCraft 2 community site is constantly expanding. Blizzard would like to welcome us to visit their brand new Maps and Mods page. The Maps and Mods page will be updated with new features in the future, including details on official Blizzard mods, as well as tutorials for various StarCraft 2 editor modules. So whether you're an aspiring map designer or a seasoned veteran with a few mods under your belt, their most recent StarCraft 2 editor tutorial should help you take your mod making to the next level. This new entry covers ground on the Terrain module, while Blizzard's new map publishing page will show you exactly how to get your content up on the Battle.net. Quite useful if you ask me, and, well, these community sites are definitely filling up quite nicely now with a lot of information that will no doubt soon be invaluable. Check it out below, learn and master. The next Achieve Craft post is up on the official community sites, and this one deals with the evacuation mission on Agria. Now, it may strike you as being all about the effectiveness of your ground units. The achievement Sacrifice Nothing adds a twist to that, offering you 10 points to complete the evacuation mission on hard difficulty without losing or salvaging a structure. Now you have to deal with both guarding the colonists as they're evacuated in waves and defending your buildings quickly and consistently. An ever-expanding Zerg force attacks your convoys, your bunkers along the road, as well as any new structures you might build, and, if you don't hold the invaders off, your base too. Has this achievement got you stumped? What strategy do you suggest? You can help your fellow achievement hunters by telling them all about your tactics in the comment section below the post on the official site. The chances are if you check those comments out you will find some decent ways of doing this. So check it all out below and happy achievement hunting. As every other week, the top 200 lists have indeed been updated again this week. You can find the European, North American, Southeast Asian and Korean lists below. We're going to start the tournament news off with what is probably the biggest piece, the GSL March Codes Finals. Yes, I did speak about them last week, but as a week has passed, I feel it about time to let you all know who in fact won that slightly one-sided best of seven. MC walked away with the win, the first prize, the honor of being the first player thus far to take two GSL seasons, and he did it all with such ease. OGS MC took Star Tales July down with a rather convincing score of 4 to 1. There was a lot of drama about this win though. As many say the Protoss Sentry made things a little too easy for MC and that the force field ability totally nullifies any micro whatsoever. MC used pretty much exactly the same playstyle in all the games he won. Imba this, Imba that. Yes, the argument has come up quite a few times over the past few months, but I guess in that series it was just made painfully obvious once again. As a Zerg player myself, I can definitely relate, but hey, I don't see that as the reason that MC won. The guy is just amazing at StarCraft 2. All of it. So if you're keen to read about those finals, watch the VODs, read the rants, or even read an interview with the winner, you know where to look. GOM TV recently hosted their second official Global StarCraft 2 Team League. The top 8 teams that have been earning points throughout the GSL March competed against each other for the chance to earn the title of the best StarCraft 2 team in the world. Yes indeed, and the finals were epic enough to prove every word of that statement. In the finals we saw the newly reformed Slayers against Incredible Miracle and man, was it a brutal battle. Slayers managed to take it with a score of 4-3 with the help of some stellar play from Alicia and MMA. The few games I saw were definitely exciting enough and I can recommend those VODs to any StarCraft 2 fan out there. Funny enough, a huge portion of the viewers were betting on IM to take the win, so I guess it was a bit of an upset too. If you're interested, you can read all about the entire GSTL March and its finals below. Time for a few North American Star League updates. 30 out of the 50 players set to participate have been announced, and, well, to try and name a few of the big name players would be a waste, as all of these players are, obviously, big names. 
So to make it a bit easier, you can see who all those players are on your screen right now. With the NASL starting on April the 5th, there are only a few days left to get the rest of those names out there, so keep checking back here soon for more. A quick mention though, a lot of people have been complaining about the huge lack of Korean players thus far, but hey, we're only halfway through so things could still change. Read more about all of it below and as a bonus, you can see a few more application VODs along with one really interesting one of a guy named Buddhist applying to be the Street Fighter announcer for the NASL. Yeah, pretty cool and I guess well worth checking out. Ah, the Team Liquid Star League. What excitement you have brought us. The first two playdays of the TSL3 have been completed and they've definitely provided ample excitement and fun at the start of the round of 32. As I mentioned last week, there were a bunch of big name players participating in these first two days and it was not without upset. In bracket A, Tyler took down Strelok, Thorzane took down The Fruit Dealer, MC took down Ciara, and White Raw bested Lona. In bracket C, we saw Sen take down Phoenix, Boxer beat Night End, Hasuops take out Huck, and lastly, perhaps the biggest upset of them all, Moro managed to beat the one and only Jinro. You can check the links below to see fully detailed results and be ready for the next few playdays that are actually happening this weekend. Definitely not to be missed, so keep checking back at teamliquid.net for all that information and that live stream. As a few TSL extras, you can read how GOMTV has actually started broadcasting the TSL for their viewers in Korea, and you can find some interviews with the players set to battle it out in the next playdays, namely MVP, Adelscott, QXC, Genius, Nesty, Goody, Naniwa, Ret, Idra, Cruncher, Cass, and Haypro. Not that much MLG news this week, but hey, at least there's something. In the MLG updates, you can check the freshly announced event calendar for the rest of their stops in this year's Major League Gaming Tour. You can also find the StarCraft 2 groups for MLG Dallas, their first scheduled stop. As a few extras, you might find some enjoyment in checking out the rather informative interview with the MLG CEO, Sundance De Giovanni as well as an interesting interview with Idra over at the MLG site and it seems like the little one has managed to pick up a full MLG sponsorship from Sony Ericsson. Check all that news out along with those smalls below. In a slightly more exciting and definitely unexpected piece of tournament news, over the past couple of days major American gaming website IGN has made known their intention to become heavily involved in competitive StarCraft 2. Information has recently come to light to suggest that this will be a new professional StarCraft 2 league in North America, sponsored by IGN and boasting a prize pool between 150,000 and 200,000 US dollars. This information comes from the mouth of an IGN employee and credible source, who, according to SK Gaming, wishes to remain anonymous at this time. Shortly after this information was discovered, a post went up over at IGN with the countdown timer running. So yes, that pretty much confirms the theory. Now, there are tons of new updates and discoveries that have been made that I won't cover here in detail. Players participating, the format of the apparent 16 player invitational and much more can all be seen in the post below, courtesy of SK Gaming. So if you absolutely can't wait to read more about this up and coming pro league, check the links below. The next Polar Fluke tournament has been announced, Easter in Ire. The tournament will be hosted on the first weekend of April with some great prizes up for grabs, courtesy of our biggest local distributor, Megarom. It is set to begin at 3pm SAST on the 2nd of April and the rounds will begin with a new shiny Swiss format with the top players advancing into the single elimination brackets. They set to start on Sunday, also at 3pm. Registration is, as always, open to everyone. You can check the links below for everything you could ever need to know about Easter in Ire, including the rules, registration links, prizes, a full list of registered players, and even a link to the video stream. If you've got a second, check out the trailer I made for it too. Be here next weekend for the fun. Let's head on over to the tournament and event smalls. In the smalls this week, you can read about Cloud, TLO, Inso, and Rhine playing a bunch of show matches live from Leipzig. You can read about the HD World Tournament sponsored by IGN and Justin TV, the DreamHack Stockholm Invitational happening on the 12th of April, Champions Trophy Asia and Europe's grids have been released, the drama about Bishu and the coin toss event at the last Remac has apparently been sorted out. And lastly, the second FX Open Invitational Series is set to start on March the 26th. Ah, uh, the art updates. 
This week we take a look at another comic contest winner with a cute entry about two banelings in a bit of a dilemma. Yes, I feel their pain quite keenly as a Zerg player. Shame. Next up, my personal favorite of the week and um, of all time perhaps, an absolutely stunningly beautiful Terran Ghost done by Von Schlipp, the same guy who brought us that amazing medic a while back. This kind of image you definitely have to download in full size to appreciate. Then lastly, a few Zerg minis made by a user named Dragoon Thor from DeviantArt. Very cute and very unzerg like You can check all those and a few added extras out below. Enjoy and be sure to leave those comments of appreciation for the artists. Razer is back with yet another sponsored player's biography on their website. First we got Boxer, then Pikachu, and now we have the infamous Christoph Mondragon Semker who made a name for himself internationally by competitively playing StarCraft Brood War. So if you want to enter the Mondragon and learn all about the past, present and future of this amazingly talented player, check the full presentation out over at Razer. These sites are always so well made and informative that I don't see why you wouldn't want to. There are a bunch of interesting interviews available this week and instead of telling you all about each and every single one of them, I will just give each of them a mention and point you in the right direction. Gosu Gamers has an exclusive Artosis interview up, Starcraft2.nl recently had a quick chat to Grubby, JP McDaniel was interviewed at PAX East and there's an interesting interview up with Carmack, the head honcho over at IEM. You can find all of those below courtesy of, well, all those different sites. I'm sure every single one of you out there has heard that silly Rebecca Black song that's been all the rage recently. Well, the song has been Starcraftified. Yes, I made that word up and it sure served its purpose there. Maximus Black from over at Lag TV recorded a parody of the hit song titled Cheese Them. Quite fitting if you know their channel at all. The lyrics are pretty funny and Maximus seems to be a natural with the mic. So overall the song is definitely worth a listen. In the next of the StarCraft 2 music, and yes, there are quite a few to look at this week, we have Brother Mac performing his very own original creation, Apologize for Playing That Race. He sings and plays his guitar in a very Johnny Cashy style, and it's a nice change from the noisy emo stuff we usually get. Great listen, check it out. Next, and last up, Tempo is back with another StarCraft 2 rap, this one titled Why Noobs Don't GG. A great performance as always and you can find the full lyrics as well as a download link below. All of the aforementioned songs are great and the artists definitely deserve our support. Enjoy them. An avid map maker from over at SC2 Mapster named Zarak was bored, found a World of Warcraft model and started making a map based on the concept of the classic game Rock Paper Scissors. It looks really interesting and is set to have three game modes, tournament, free roam and tug of war. He says he's making it because he actually enjoys working in the editor and thought that the idea was something nice, casual, simple and something that he could do to advance in other areas than terrain in. A great idea if you ask me and it looks like it could be a lot of fun. Check it out and read more below. Let's head on over to the community smalls. In the smalls this week you can read about Rotterdam University episode 6, A Change of Tactic. Is Taiwan set to become the new mecha of StarCraft 2? NetEase has announced that StarCraft 2's open beta will start on March the 29th in China. You can read more about the Gamer Search by Team Dignitas. Right here on YouTube you can check GG Rated Live Show Episode 7 out. Destiny tries his hand at prank calling a few people. Got up dog? You can check the next StarCraft 2 noob training out by Athene. QXE has apparently left Root to join FXO. And the last small, I can't really explain this one to you, but it is a bit of a confession from Day9 about his brother Tasteless. Definitely worth checking out. That's it for Pulse65 and this always entertaining StarCraft news. I hope you're all set for this weekend, keep checking back here soon for more and remember to like this video, favorite it, share it with your friends and subscribe. Most importantly though, happy StarCrafting.